Hi, so winter is almost upon us. Yes, TAT 2022 is just round the corner. Keeping this in mind, we know each and every one of you is really excited, but is also looking for the last final push and the fillip that is going to add those extra 5, 10, 15 percentile to your final CAT score. Well, because of this, Baiju's exam prep brings to you the last lap to CAT 2022, starting on the 17th of October, all the way till the 20th of November. Yes, four and a half intensive, in fact, almost five intensive weeks of preparation. What more? The focus is predominantly going to be CAT, which means, as we know, time, speed, distance and time and work in totality have almost equal weightage or sometimes even more weighted than geometry. So can we go ahead and leave geometry and just focus on these two? Can we go ahead and leave entire theta para jumbles and skill score a 99.99 percentile in verbal? Yes, we can. This and much, much more in terms of preparation, in terms of intensive questions that we're going to look at and the smartest way of going ahead and solving that. So catch us on the Baiju's exam prep app and in case you missed that on YouTube, but go ahead, download the Baiju's exam prep app and also get a 99 percentile kit, which is going to help you ace CAT 2022. See you soon. A very good noon to all of you. Hello, how are you Varun? I'm good, I'm good. I hope the same for you. Hi, Gibson. Good afternoon. Hello, Akhil. So, King Style Productions, you told me your name yesterday. Chirag, was it? Hi, Sony. Hi, Guru. Hello, Akhil. Hi, Pragya. Hello, Arika. Good afternoon, Divya. Good afternoon, Amrit. Hi, Maitri. Dyanesh. Good afternoon. Hello, Jaydev. Hello, hello. Hi, all of you. A very good afternoon to all of you. I hope all of you are working hard for CAT and all of you are working consistently. Very important. So yesterday, the official mock was released and there were no changes in VERC as such, right? 24 questions and uh, of course, four RC passages with four questions each and the other as we had predicted, 3, 3, 2, the distribution of VA also was pretty much the same, right? So no major changes, no changes in fact in VARC as such when compared to last year. Right, right. Uh, hi, hi Tanisha, hello Prajwal, hi Piyush. Hi, hi Ayush, same here. Good noon Kinjal. Okay, uh, also I hope you're aware in case you're taking ZAD, ZAD has changed its timings. Okay, so now the paper will be in the afternoon starting from 2 and ending at 5, 10 I believe, right? So the timings of ZAD stand changed, the official mock for CAT was released. These are the two things that happened recently. So Piyush, uh, probably what is happening is that you are focusing on it, but at the same time you are very tensed about it when you attempt it right when that happens then usually we are able to narrow down to the, the two close options but then we end up marking the wrong one because we overthink we over analyze so you have to approach it in a calm manner that's one thing right another thing is that if you're able to spot a pattern in why you get your questions wrong are there any specific types of questions? Are there any particular genres? Are there any genres that are easy for you? Any question types that are easy for you? Identifying that at this stage, that will help you a lot because it will help you to choose your questions in the exam. Right? See, we need not attempt each and everything if we realize that some areas are our strengths and some are weaknesses. Capitalize on your strengths at this stage. Okay? So, try this. Pull out your last three mocks at least and see if there is some pattern that you can identify there. Some strengths that you can identify there. Right? Okay. Uh, it is usually, yes, Varun, the official mock is close to the actual exam. Usually. Right? Of course, minor changes can happen. That's there. However, usually it's the official mock. So, it is close. Right? Uh, so see this, I agree they are previous your papers, right? It was your CAT 2021 paper only that was there, right? However, we take the official mock to be an indicator of the pattern of the exam, right? So most likely the pattern of the exam is not going to change, right? Thank you. Thank you, Shubham. VRC first and then RC. Yes, Prajwal, absolutely. See, you 
go with the strategy that is uh, the most comfortable for you that works the best for you so a lot of my students do that that uh, some some of them you know they alternate between let's say one rc passage and then one para summary question or one uh, para jumble question some of them do that and it works for them some of them start with a couple of questions of va and then they complete their rcs then they go back to the remaining questions of va some of them do this also that they first complete their va portion and then they go to the rcs so whatever works for you go for that just focus on maximizing your attempts and maximizing your accuracy that's the only bottom line right okay so now coming to our agenda for the day what we are going to do today we are going to talk about of course some va questions this entire series we've been doing that only yes we've been talking about para jumbles and para summary questions in para jumbles or sentence out also then of course whenever we solve a question we see how we have to eliminate elimination is the only denominator that uh, you know actually is common across all your vrc questions and lastly of course we end up solving some questions on various topics in va right so without further ado let me begin with type in the answer para jumbles yes let's see so type in the answer para jumbles usually you are given four sentences you have to make an entire sequence the directions look something like this so read and then let's go to the question proper sequencing is what so please read the instructions in the exam also carefully earlier this used to happen a lot that in type in the answer para jumble students would identify the odd one out in odd one out they would make an entire sequence don't do that okay so tell me what will be the sequence for this para jumble yes sequence for this para jumble Amrit, I do not have an idea about this. Are they counting this year's uh, aspirants? Uh, on what basis are they giving the result? Uh, not aware of this. Parag, Word Power Made Easy is a vocabulary book, right? It's a book from which you learn vocabulary. CAT does not directly ask you vocabulary. So, uh, at best, it will just help you to learn some new words that may be there in your RC passages. For CAT, you have to practice RC passages in VA. Okay. Uh, vocabulary directly is not asked in it. So, Ayush has given a sequence already. Okay. Quite a few of you say 4 is the opening sentence. Then I've got some 2, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1 also. Okay. There's a chance. All right. All right. Uh, so Prajwal, uh, I will, I will do that. Also last year also, I took this series called Let's Tackle the Toughest RCs of CAT. So there I took some previous year tough passages. For instance, the passage about Derrida, Derrida's philosophy that was there in 2006 or 7. Then there was this passage about communism. So I took those and they're still available over YouTube. So you can consider watching those also, right? Okay, so a lot of you think that 4 should be the opening sentence and you are correct. 4 should indeed be the opening sentence, not 2. Okay, um, also not 1 in case some of you were thinking of making 1 the opening sentence. Actually here, uh, the pairs, it was easy to identify the mandatory pairs. Why? See, 3 says even papyri come mainly from pyramid temples. Papyri, if you could associate it with papyrus, Papyrus means paper and it is also, I mean, the one meaning is the documents that contain information, documents containing information, ancient documents, because they were written on paper, no, they were scrolls. So, even papyri, if papyri is the plural, come mainly from pyramid temples. That means we are talking about our sources of information here. So, one, three is a pair. 
1, 3 is a pair. Now we are left with 4 and 2. Um, 4 says we know infinitely more about the wealthy people of Egypt than we do about the ordinary people. A comparison here. As most monuments were made for the rich. Okay. So then this will continue it. Houses in which ordinary Egyptians lived have not been preserved. And when most people died, they were buried in simple graves. So 4 introduces this idea that we know more about rich than about poor. Right. And 2 then tells me why is it? Why is that the case? Because where ordinary people live, they have not been preserved. Those areas have not been preserved. So 4 to 1, 3 is going to be the sequence here. Okay. Uh, a lot of you, I think, said 4 to 1, 3. So this was not a very difficult question. Okay. Uh, Ayush said it. Then Tanisha said it. Karthik said it. If I'm missing out anyone, Vishal said it. Uh, all right. Yash, Prajwal. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. So, 4 to 1, 3 is the sequence here. Right. We introduce the idea and also look at the word the old kingdom. So, which old kingdom am I talking about? Egypt's old kingdom. So, first I had to introduce this idea. Then only I can say the old kingdom. That is why 4 is the opening sentence and not 1 in case somebody was confused. Right. Chalo. Great. Yes, Ayush. Yes. Okay, so we have got our sequence here. This was not a very difficult question, something that you should definitely give a shot in the exam. Now let's come to question two. Let's see what you say here. Yes. Okay. All right. So, four, three, one, different opening sentences I'm getting. Again, not a difficult question, this one also. Although the sentences are a little longish, but the parajumbal is not difficult. Three, one, okay, all right. One, two, four, three, quite a few of you giving this sequence. All right. Hmm. Others. It definitely starts with one. Yes. But uh, one says they. Who are these they? As chroniclers. Chroniclers, somebody who chronicles or basically arranges something in the order in which it happened. As chroniclers of an incremental process, they discover that additional research makes it harder, not easier to answer questions like, okay, so some questions have been mentioned. So, they must refer to someone and it does refer to historians. Yes, historians here also. So, one is not the opening sentence here. Four is the opening sentence. In recent years, now I understand that because of this, however, you might have felt that, okay, there is some sentence that comes before this. Right. But the truth is there is no contradiction mentioned to four in any of the above sentences. There is no contradiction to four in any of the above. Rather they are supporting, all of them are supporting this idea that is mentioned in four. So in recent years, a few historians of science have been finding it more and more difficult to fulfill the functions that the concept of development by accumulation, development by accumulating things assigns to them. So they are finding it increasingly difficult. Okay. As chroniclers of an incremental process. Now see, this also was related to this. Development by accumulation. Theme based clue here. Okay. Development by accumulation means it's an incremental process. So as chroniclers of an incremental process, they discover that these questions are harder to answer. Okay. Some questions are mentioned and then we said these are simply the wrong sorts of questions. Which? These. 
So it has to be 3 here. Simultaneously, they are facing another problem. And see, it says these same historians. So first, I'll talk about them for the first time, a few historians. And then only I can call them these same historians. So 2. Another problem is mentioned in 2. 4132. Excellent. Those who said 4132, who answered the fastest? Let's see. Uh, Sachin gave it the fastest. 4132. Then Guru. Uh, after that, Lokesh. 4132. In case I'm missing out anybody, please bear with me. Amrita. Amrit, sorry. Amrit. Amrit answered it. Okay. 4132. Apurva. All right. Shubham, Gyanesh. So see, quite a few of you figured it out. Yes. So not a very difficult question all in all. Okay. Hi, Kavya. So let's have a look at some odd sentence para jumbles now. We'll focus again relatively more on para summary today also. Yes, because in our previous sessions, we have focused more on type in the answer para jumbles. That's why. So, uh, five jumbled up sentences are given to you. Okay. They form a coherent paragraph. Four of them out. Four of them. Okay. Out of these five. So, you have to identify the odd one out and you have to then key in that number. Just the odd sentence ka number. All right. So, five sentences here. Let's see who does it the fastest. Okay. <clears throat> all right, all right. Five, four. Okay. Three also I've got, okay. So, <coughs> here you could have made pairs, isn't it? And based on that, we could have eliminated. We didn't need to make a sequence, of course. Just a couple of pairs would have sufficed. Okay. So, um, if you see in areas where there are no lords or laws or in frontier zones where all men go armed, the attitude of the peasantry may well be different. Okay. So how may it be different when there are no laws, when there are no lords? Yes. It may actually become unsubmissive. The peasantry, the peasants, they may become unsubmissive in those areas. Right. However, for most of the soil bound peasants, see again, even if you didn't make pairs also, you could have related peasantry with peasants. Yes. Uh, for most of the soil bound peasants, the problem is not whether to be normally passive or active, but when to pass from one state to another. So that is the problem that they have to uh, face when to be submissive, when to not be submissive. Okay. This depends on an assessment of the political situation. This depends on the assessment of the political situation. So, the fact that when they'll pass from one state to another. Fringe groups. We are not discussing fringe groups in the other sentences. So, 3 and 5, nobody should have marked as the odd sentences. Okay. Because 3, 5 makes a clear there. Now, if you are uh, confused, let's say, uh, between 1, 2 and 4, then 1 says, so indeed, it may be on the fringe of the unsubmissive. Okay. What is this it? It must refer to peasantry only. Yes. Their attitude we were talking about. Attitude say unsubmissive you could have related. So even one could be eliminated. It comes down to two and four. Okay. So fringe groups is not something that has been discussed in the other uh, sentences. That's why this is the odd one out. Also you could have related this to two. Five could have been related to two. So that's how you could have eliminated. Yes, yes, 5 is related to 2. Correct. Okay, good. 4 is the answer. 
fringe groups are a danger to any political organization we have not even discussed any political organization here as such we are discussing the attitude of peasants okay i hope this makes sense to everyone all right good let's come to our next odd sentence question again five sentences one of them is the odd one out tell me which one it is yes if you find value in the session then please do press the like button our team has been telling you this to you time and again fastest answer acha who answered the fastest four four king style productions your name is chirag right so you answered the fastest nidu submissive means when you are very compliant when you obey obey people very very easily okay when you comply with their demands okay all right <coughs> you have to identify the odd sentence out okay all right okay all right amrit what do you say So Bendu what do you say Okay yes says two that's different from the others all right Okay let's have a look let's have a look So why so many of you why did so many of you say four isn't one related to four but it's most advanced formulation is called super string theory which even predicts the precise number of dimensions 10 okay the usual three dimensions of space length width and breadth and one of time are now extended by six more spatial dimensions so that makes it 10 right length width breadth time plus 6 so aren't one and four connected yes so why is one or four the odd sentence out that's what i'm trying to understand also one is related to this if in case you feel that three belongs in case you feel that three belongs then one should also belong see this scientifically the hyperspace theory goes by the names of kaluza klein theory and super gravity so it goes by these names scientifically but its most advanced formulation but its most advanced formulation is called super string theory so although it goes by these names its most advanced formulation has a different name it is called super string theory so even three is related it had to be the choice had to be between 2 and 5 between 2 and 5 which one appears to be more unrelated to you yes one says 10 dimensions no so length width breadth and one of time so these are four Plus six. Four plus six makes it ten. So we don't. I understand that while others, uh, uh, while here we have hyperspace, here we have it. Okay, this also talks. Sorry, this also has the word hyperspace. But uh, I mean, our basis cannot always be this. That if four sentences have the same word, then they must belong to the paragraph. okay between 2 and 5 now think about it which is more related to the discussion that has happened in 1 3 and 
and tell me what should be the odd one out between two and five. Okay, two, five, two. So we are we seem to be defining a theory, isn't it? We seem to be introducing a theory. What what are the names that it goes by, and uh, in its advanced most advanced formulation, this is what it is called. So which is more related to? Is two more related to it? Is five more related to this process of introducing, defining, etc.? Yes. So. As if space was not vast enough, a hyperspace has emerged. Okay. As if space was not vast enough, a hyperspace has emerged. Scientifically, the hyperspace theory goes by the names of this, this, this. Okay. And see, uh, we it even pre predicts the precise number of dimensions. So in the hyperspace, you have 10 dimensions instead of length, width, breadth, and one extra of time you have 10 spatial dimensions so it's likely to be i mean i am just imagining it here it's likely to be more vast than the space right so as if space was the notion of space was not enough a hyperspace has also emerged right uh five says we caution that the theory of hyperspace has not yet been experimentally confirmed and would in fact be exceedingly difficult to prove in the laboratory this talks about it's uh veracity its authenticity how uh, valid or invalid it is whereas currently i seem to be just introducing this theory that see this theory has emerged now this theory has 10 dimensions okay this theory says that hyperspace has 10 dimensions so while one two three four talk about it four goes a step beyond and talks about how it has not yet been experimentally confirmed we caution it gives a caution so probably we'll talk about uh, We'll first talk about how it emerged and then the fact that, okay, it has not yet been experimentally confirmed, right? So, five is the odd sentence out, okay? Uh, all right. So, this proved to be a good question. I was anticipating that you would narrow down to two and five, but uh, I think nobody gave two or five initially, okay? All right, all right. So, I think... We read through our uh, fourth sentence quite speedily. That also led to our saying that four is the odd one out. Okay. Hope it is clear now. Okay. All right. So my effort is to bring difficult questions to you. So I get a sadistic pleasure whenever you don't get a question, right? That tells me, okay, I chose a good question. Anyway, uh, coming to para summary. So there is negative marking here something that all of you know so we have to be relatively careful with these questions okay coming to our first question i am going to disappear yes and you will read the question and tell me the answer right let's see who does it the fastest not a difficult question Okay, I've got one response. Okay. Uh, 
All right. So quite a few fours. Okay. So King Style, you've changed your answer, is it? And you're not even telling me your name? <coughs> so I didn't expect a lot of fours here, but I have got a lot of fours. Let's address this, okay? Let's address this. So this is an easy question. You just had to read carefully. That's it. Nothing philosophical, nothing abstract. Okay. And very relatable also. So um, first things first, do just you not know them well or do they also not know you well? See, they knew as little of you as you did of them. This is very clearly stated. So why four? Four says you encountered hardship among your school fellows because you did not know them well. The thing is that both sides did not know each other, right? So right at this stage, I become suspicious of four. Also, it says you should not learn to make enemies because of your prejudices unless they behave badly with you. So that means if they behave badly with you, make an enemy out of them. Okay, show them their place. Yes, that's what four is telling us. But uh, the paragraph is telling us to not make enemies even when you encounter, even if they... Uh, it says do not think ill of them till they behave ill to you and even after they behave ill to you strive to avoid the faults be like Gandhiji strive to avoid the faults which you see in them this will disarm their hostility sooner than pique or resentment or complaint than if you hold bitterness or resentment or complaint against them so even when you've encountered bad behavior then also try to avoid their faults so it does not say that make enemies when once they behave badly with you so, 4 is eliminated. Okay. Again, 3, you did not know them well. Also, it says uh, you should learn not to make enemies because of your prejudices irrespective of their behavior towards you. So, um, this is slightly distorted because we have make, made a distinction that, uh, of course, till the time they don't behave badly, don't think ill of them. And even once they behave badly, then avoid their faults. Then you Avoid the faults which you see in them. So two is capturing it better. Avoid prejudice and negative thoughts till you encounter bad behavior from others. And once you do, then win them over by shunning the faults, by just ignoring their faults that you observed. So two is making that distinction that three is not. Okay. I hope this is clear. Okay, let's have a look at one also, Varun. The discomfort you felt with your school fellows is because both sides knew little of each other. So the first sentence is correct. You should not complain unless you find others prejudiced against you and have attempted to carefully analyze the faults you have observed in them. Are we talking about analyzing others' faults or avoiding others' faults? So this unless is problematic. This analysis of faults is problematic. Okay. So two is the answer here. This is actually a previous year question, Anushka. You are right. Summaries are supposed to be crisp and usually, I mean, in the recent years, you get one sentence summaries. Okay. We need to win them over. Okay, okay, okay. See, uh, we are trying to disarm their hostility. When you try to disarm someone, what does it mean to disarm someone? Yes. Meaning of this word. Are we... Do they, are they carrying any weapons that we are disarming them of? So we are not using it literally. Yes. When you charm someone. Yes. Let's say someone is hostile towards you, but you charm them with your behavior. You actually reduce their hostility towards you. That is called disarming someone. So disarming, one meaning of disarm is to persuade, to charm. Okay. All right. Hope this is clear, Surya, Nidul. So, uh, the word disarm makes it clear. 
ठीक है Also, you have to look what is the best out of the lot. Even if let's say you did not know this in the exam, let's say I don't know what disarm their hostility mean uh, means, and uh, I also have a doubt about winning them over. Yes, I have a doubt about it. But then all the other options have glaring errors here. So unless you find others prejudiced against you, okay, carefully analyze the faults. This is not given at all. Similar, so two problems here. right uh, this sentence implies that once you find others prejudice then you can complain that is not what the paragraph says similarly uh, it says irrespective of their behavior towards you and you did not know well again two problems right similarly here also we spotted two problems so we have more problems in the other options even if let's say you do not realize in the exam that these two are related okay all right so coming to question 6 i am again going to disappear let the questions these are but not difficult ones Okay. Yes, Surya, it does. It does matter. Good that you noticed this. so we have three so far three threes let's see what the others say okay okay so mostly threes others also respond quickly this is the second last question for the day one question remains so i want enthusiastic responses three okay so i think this was easy for everyone then because you are correct the answer is 3 here right it's the most comprehensive isn't it so let's discuss it once uh okay so um let's look problems in others yes although everybody has given me 3 only let's see the problems in others a new kind of class conflict arises from preferential treatments given to agents of resource intensification by the state which the local community sees as unfair fine it sees it as unfair then what does it do that's an important part of the paragraph right they have they basically are on the receiving end and they have no recourse except direct action resisting both the state and outside exploiters through a variety of protest techniques and this this protest this act of protesting this manifest this actually gives rise to a new kind of class conflict so it misses this important bit option 1 second the grant of long leases this has just been used as an example first of all through the grant of generous long leases over uh, minerals or fish stocks for example or the provision of raw material at an enormously subsidized price both of these are examples of preferential treatment only right so uh, a summary should talk about preferential treatment the idea and not really the example okay so i rejected it based on this itself the moment i read this i realized okay it's it's talking about the example but it's not telling me the idea which is preferential treatment to these agents of resource intensification 
Three and four, okay. Let's look at four. Local communities have no option but to protest against agents of resource intensification and create a new type of class conflict. So this act creates, okay. Their struggles create, okay. So this is a little distorted. Now it, it says when they are given, when they are given raw material at subsidized prices for an expanding commercial industrial economy. Again, this is just one way of giving them preferential treatment. This was just one example. There are other ways also. So preferential treatment has not been mentioned. Three is our best choice. Good. All of you who said three. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I am going to end the session soon because everybody is waiting for your session. Right. Four is convoluted. Correct, Amrit. Correct. Okay, then. Let's have a look at question seven. Last question for the day. Let's see what you say. Okay, so I've got one response. Okay. All right. So an overwhelming number of you say two. Any reason for preferring it over one? Preferring it to one? Yes. So very close one and two are here. Isn't it? There's one difference though, one major difference. Let's see what that is. <coughs> so, um, Research will help find the definitive answer or oh, and here it says finding a definitive answer will help them. So this actually tells me that the scientists will find the definitive answer. Finding a definitive answer will help them. So if you see here, um, more definitive answer to this debate will allow scientists to better predict when and how quickly the next climate shift will happen. This is more in line with the tone of the paragraph because the paragraph does not say that research will actually help in finding the answer. It's, it just says that uh, when scientists get a more definitive answer, that will allow them to better predict. Okay, so finding an answer will allow them to better predict. So this leaves it uh, on the scientists, right? This does not leave it on research to find the definitive answer, something that does not match with, with, with my paragraph. Right. Uh, I agree, Karthik. I agree. Doesn't talk about research finding it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the slight difference between 1 and 2. And 2 is framed keeping this in mind that it is closer to the passage. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. So spot such, uh, um, you know, questions in para summary. I'm not saying that you leave the others, but you should definitely, definitely attempt such questions as we have done today. These were on the easier side and they were not even abstract. Right? Okay. So, yes, yes, it will help. Okay. Uh, already been done. Okay. 
all right prajwal as you say right i am not going as far as to interpret that okay i understand that some research has been done on it i just know that research is not mentioned when we talk about this that was my basis for elimination all right okay so i hope this is clear to everyone and these seven questions are now crystal clear to you also uh, it does give you an insight into question selection so we did questions that were more on the easier side today except the odd sentence para jumbles i believe right so choose such questions in the exam do give them a sincere shot okay and you should join us for a detailed analysis we'll have it for all the slots 1 2 and 3 on the 27th and we'll not just give you uh, an analysis we'll talk about all these things that you can see here right so a very detailed thorough analysis is going to happen all right this is our cat 23 comprehensive program in case any of your friends are preparing you should recommend this to them we offer not just classroom sessions but also recorded lectures preparation for stage 2 a lot of material to practice etc right and this is our mock series particularly pertinent for all your non cat exams 50 non cat mock tests are there along with a lot of practice questions video solutions etc and the last lap is already going on i'm going to have a couple of sessions soon we'll talk about summary etc so i i had actually kept this month for va only because last month i got a lot of queries from you that why don't we do more of va so in last lap also i'll be taking the va uh, sessions we'll talk about para summary etc right welcome welcome first lot actually i we were also wondering the same amrit uh nobody in verbal has got it Yeah, okay i'll have to check if somebody in quant has got it right navin sir has it okay navin sir has it right okay so uh yes you can join us on our social media handles and you can also stay connected via telegram right here you can ask each other your queries discuss things with each other right i'll see you tomorrow uh with a part 5 that would be probably the last part of this particular series 100 most important questions right and uh, yes keep preparing keep attending and i'm giving you a sufficient amount of time before saral sir session starts so take a break and then join there okay do like the session don't forget that bye bye see you see you tomorrow bye welcome welcome all of you